This video will talk you through wiring the Amploi L520 lock to the Impro Technologies RTOT2 EL. You will need an Amploi EA420 controller, 10 core data cable, and 4 core data cable. Here is a wiring table. You can pause the video here and work from this. We can continue and I'll step through each wire and you can pause it in between each wire. This is the cable that comes with the EL520 motor lock. Wiring is very simple and I'll walk you through that process now. Trim the lock cable so it's long enough to reach from the lock to the EA420 with 30 to 60 centimeters of spare. Strip back the outer sheath to expose 10 centimeters of the colored wires. You can strip back the ends to reveal five millimeters of copper. From then on, you simply wire the lock cables to their designated colors here. They're clearly written in the list down here. In the case where they've got black plus vial, that means black and violet. So you'll have two wires going into number 22. And, and then there's red, red slash green here. That means you have one red and green wire coming into pin 28. The rest are all straightforward. You just follow the colors indicated on the EA420 cover. You'll need to cut a length of 10 core data cable and 4 core data cable long enough to reach from the EA420 to the RTRT2 EL. Leave an extra 60 or so centimeters. Strip back the outer sheath on both the 10 core and the 4 core cables to reveal 7 or so centimeters of the colored wires. And strip the ends of the colored wires back so that the 5 millimeters of copper is exposed. Beginning with the 10 core cable, you fasten the red wire into number 1 the grey or the white wire into number two, yellow wire into number four, put a link from number four down to number 13, brown wire into number five, number six is a blue wire, purple wire into number seven, and then a link going from pin seven to number 10, Then there's a green wire going into number 9, orange wire into number 12, black wire into 14, the dark grey wire goes into number 15. From the 4 core cable we put a red into number 16 and we put a blue into 18. Around the corner here you put a yellow into 32 and a green into 31. Try not to disturb the cables you already had in here. Twist them together nicely so they make good contact. Moving across to the distributed controller end of things. Begin by stripping back both of the data cables. So you expose 12 to 15 centimeters of the colored conductors. Beginning with the 10 core data cable, moving around this corner here. We'll start with a red wire going to 12 volts DC. A light gray or white wire going into ground. A purple wire going to COM V. Yellow going into COM Y. Blue into handle. Brown into the trigger. Green into cylinder orange into bolt in, the last terminal is not used. Then we have a black wire going into this first lock terminal, dark grey going into the second lock terminal. Continuing with the four core cable, we have a green that joins up with the grey wire that we put into the second lock terminal here. They go and twist it together. 
Then we have a yellow wire into the third lock terminal. It's called lock pink, loop pink. Yellow into loop pink. Then we have a red going into the secure terminal under relay one. Then a blue one going into the power ground in relay one. And it's advisable to put a MOV between these two terminals to protect the relay. Running through the dip switch settings. The mode dip switch must be set to 0000. zero, zero, zero. That's all switches off. This is the door controller mode. This middle set of switches. Reader 1 switch should be set for the correct reader option. In the case of this installation, we need to set this to OSDP, which is 0111. That is all switches on except the first one. These bottom switches, the reader 2 switch, will set up how many OSDP readers will be connected to the reader port. In this installation, we'll have both entrance and exit readers, so we need to set this to 1010. That's on off, on off. Remember to set the addresses on the readers so that this controller can tell them apart.